Memory Code. What's up, everybody? This is Memory Code. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this royalty free beat. Let's get into it. What up, what up? So yeah, this video is about making the type of beat that Dilo was doing when he was in his electronic and craft work inspired era. A lot of those beats were released in 2015 on an album called Dilatronic. I would definitely recommend checking that out. There's a link in the description. So yeah, I'm gonna just get right into it. Right now I'm using a template that I have set up with everything that I like to use when I make beats. So I have a channel for the kick and snare with the rack and effects already set up. Same thing for the hi-hat. I have a few bass channels with instruments and routing already set up and then a few channels for samples. So for me, using templates really helps me save time and be more efficient. That way I can just open it up and start making a beat and I don't have to spend a lot of time getting everything set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some sounds to the kick and snare rack. So I'm gonna just go to the boom bat megabytes volume one folder and this is actually a new sample pack that i have out check out the description for a link if you want to pick this up i'm going to just go grab this kick this is one of my all-time favorite kick sounds from my personal collection same thing with this snare i really love this snare and then before i program the beat i'm going to just copy this kick over so i can make a pre-kick out of it so I'm going to just hold down option, click and drag. And then hit command R on Mac and just label that pre. I'm going to turn the volume down kind of a lot. Turn on a low pass filter. Switch it to 12 dB and cut out a bunch of the highs. So it's a little bit more muffled and then bring in the end time. So it's a little shorter. So that way it's the same drum sound, but it's just a little bit more quiet, a little bit more muffled, just so I could use it to add a little bit more bounce to the beat. So yeah, I'm gonna just go to the arrangement, highlight one measure on Mac, hit Command Shift M to put in the MIDI clip. And a lot of times I do like to play in the drums using pads, but for this, I'm gonna just click in the notes. So I'm going to put a kick on the one, snare on the two, a little bit behind the beat, snare on the four, a little bit behind the beat. I'm going to put another kick here, a little bit behind the beat, and then a pre-kick here, really far behind the beat, just to give it a little bounce going into the next bar. Here's what it sounds like. I'm going to just highlight that and hit Command D, and duplicate it out. I'm going to delete the pre-kick in the second bar and then just right click on it and change the color so I know it's a little bit of a different pattern. I'm going to copy that here also. And yeah, that's it for the kick and snare. I wanted to keep it simple and open but still driving since there's kind of a lot going on with the sample in this beat. And then now I'll add a hi-hat sound to the hi-hat rack. So I'm going to go back to the Boom Bat Megabytes Volume 1 and grab the hi-hat. I really like this hi-hat sound. It goes really well with the kick and snare. So I'll just put in a MIDI clip. And for the hi-hat pattern, I wanted to keep it really simple. So I just use straight quarter notes. So it's driving, but still keeps it kind of open. I'm going to put this one a little behind the beat. So it goes with the snare. And same with this one. So here's what that sounds like. So 
So yeah, that's it for the drums. And then next, I'm going to chop up and sequence the sample. All right, so since this video is about making a royalty-free beat, I'm going to be using a sample that I made myself. I made this using the Korg Minilog analog synthesizer. And when I made it, I kind of had in mind the composer Jean-Michel Jarre. Check out the description for a link if you want to listen to some of his stuff. Yeah, he's a really dope electronic music composer. So I kind of wanted to make something that I would hear on one of his records and then be hyped to sample. So yeah, the sample is part of the Boom Bap Megabytes Volume 1 pack. So I'm going to just go grab that and drag it in. Here's what it sounds like. So a lot of times when I'm making a beat, I'll have a channel for the sample and then right under it, I'll have a blank channel that's turned off. And that way I can keep the original source material down there and then just copy stuff from it and then put it up in the actual sample channel. So yeah, this first little piece of the sample is going to be the start of the sequence. So I'm going to just copy that and put it right in the channel. And then I'm going to grab the first half of that. And notice how there's a little piece right here that is the start of the next note. It sounds a little bit weird, so I'm going to just cut that out and move that back so it's a little cleaner. And then here, I want a different piece. So I'm going to be using a technique that I like to call the Fortet technique. I don't think that's what it's really called, but I learned it when I was watching an interview with Fortet. Check out the description for a link if you want to check him out. He's a really dope producer of a lot of different styles of music. I can't find the interview that I saw this in. So unfortunately, I can't link to that, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. I'm going to just duplicate this right here. And then this is the big thing with the Fortet technique. If you double click on the clip, you get the sample view down here. And then you have these two triangles, which are the start and the end time of the sample. But this lighter color area is the actual part of the sample that is playing. And then all of this darker area is sounds that are contained in the clip but that aren't playing. So if you drag this end marker, you can extend the playable section. But when you do that, it also extends the clip up in the arrangement. But if you have another clip right after it, and you drag out that end marker, it'll stop when it hits that next clip. So you could drag that end marker all the way to the end and then once you have it like that, you can move the start marker and scan through the whole sound. And notice how when I move it down here, the sound wave changes up here. So it's a good way to, to scan through a big piece of audio and pick out your slices. So yeah, this piece right here, I like to call a bookend or a stopper. So a helpful thing that you can do is right click on that stopper piece and then click deactivate clip. So that way you won't hear this, but it will still stop this from extending. And then you can scan through and find the piece that you want to use. So so I'm going to roll with this for now. And then I'm going to copy this, move this little stopper piece and just paste this slice a few more times. And then get a different cut for right here. So for now, I'm going to just copy that, paste it, move this end timer, and then just move the start timer to find a different piece. And then I'll put 
put a little clip fade right there just to help the flow. So yeah, that's that's going to be the first bar of the sequence. And a lot of times when I make a beat, I think of a concept known as A, B, A, C. So that just means that the first bar is the A, the original idea. And then the second bar is going to be the B, a variation. The third bar is the A idea again. And then the fourth is the C, a different variation. That way you can have a good blend of repetition and variation. Because if you just, if every measure was different ideas the whole time, there would be no consistency. It could potentially sound like chaos. Or if every bar was the exact same every time, it could potentially get a little bit too repetitive. So A, B, A, C is a good way to, to mix it up and, and keep it fresh for the listener. So I'm going to just select all of that and copy it and put it right here. And then here for the B, I'm going to do a little variation. So I'm going to just copy the first few pieces of the A idea. I'm going to put that there. And now here I'll do a variation. It's so actually I'm going to move this stopper over here for now. And I'm going to just grab a piece from down here, paste it up here. But I'm going to transpose it up seven half steps. Transposing up a sound seven half steps is like transposing it up a fifth. So it's a good way to kind of imply a chord change in sample chops. So I'm going to just right click on that and change the color. That way I know this slice is transposed. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag it all the way out to the end of the bar and then just move the start time a little bit. And then just select that, hit Command E to cut this into two pieces. And then put a little fade right there. So here's the B idea. And then for the C idea, I'm going to start it with this first slice. Move that stopper, duplicate that out, but I'm going to pitch that up seven half steps. Right click and change the color. Then I'm going to grab this cut and duplicate it and just put a little variation right there. So yeah, when you transpose those pieces up, it kind of gives the illusion of like the sample going somewhere, like to a different place. And then when it drops back in here, it's like it lands again in the original idea. So here's what the whole sequence sounds like. And then I'm going to just put some clip fades in to help with the flow. All right, so that's the sequence. And then next, I'm going to process that with a few effects. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is EQ the sample a little bit. When I play it, you can see and hear that there's kind of a lot of low mid content. So I'm going to just turn on a high pass. And cut that out just a little bit. And then you can also see there's kind of a lot of high frequency content. So I'm going to use a high shelf to turn that down a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to set that to about 5K and drop the gain a little bit. So 
sometimes in situations like this, you could just use a low pass and cut out the highs. But that could potentially make the sample a little bit too dull. So the high shelf is good because it keeps the frequencies in there, but it just turns them down. That way it sounds a little darker, a little more grimy, but it's it's not too dull. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more movement to the sound. Usually when I do this, I use the Tremolator plugin by Sound Toys. Tremolo is just rhythmic amplitude modulation, and that just means basically turning the volume up and down rhythmically. So I have this set to 16th notes, I have the groove and the feel adjusted so it's a little bit behind the beat. And then this depth right here is basically it's the amount. So right now I have it set in the middle. So here's what it sounds like. If I turn the depth all the way up, it's really noticeable. If I turn it all the way down, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, it's usually somewhere right in the middle is good. It's because it's more subtle still adding that movement. So yeah, you don't need the tremolator. You can get a similar effect just using stock plugins from your DAW. There's a few different ways to go about doing this, but for this video, I'm going to just show one way. This is probably my favorite way, and also it's actually the quickest and easiest. So yeah, I'm going to just go to my audio effects and grab an auto pan. So usually the auto pan just pans the sound between the left and the right channels, but I'm going to set it up to turn it into a tremolo effect. So the first thing is turn the amount to 100%. I'm going to switch the rate to a note subdivision. Just make sure it's set to 16th notes. And then I'm going to turn the phase all the way down to zero. So here's what it sounds like. If you have the phase at 180, it'll pan between the left and right channels. But when you drop it to zero, you get that tremolo effect. And then there's a few other things you can do to fine tune it. The first thing is adjust this shape. The more you turn that up, the sharper the cuts get. So I, I like it more to the left, so it's a little bit more rounded. You can also adjust the shape down here. But I like the sine wave shape, it's nice and smooth. So then you can use this offset to adjust the swing and put it a little bit behind the beat. And then for the amount, you can turn that down a little bit. So it's not as noticeable then you can actually bring this phase up a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle also and also get some some stereo movement between the left and the right happening so yeah i would recommend check out all of these on your own and just work on fine tuning it to get it exactly how you want it but yeah here it is without and here it is with roll with that for now and then I have this wider plugin this is a really good plugin from polyverse it's free check out the description for a link if you want to pick this up it's a really good plugin for adding width to a sound and just making it sound a little bit bigger and more full you could potentially use this width dial on the utility but this doesn't actually generate width it just turns up the volume on the content that is already there in your sides. This actually generates width and you can see I'm using it pretty subtly right now, but you can really push it if, if you want to. But yeah, I'm just using that. And then on the utility, I have the base mono turned on and set to 200. That way everything at 200 and, and below will be 
in mono, and this is just a good way to keep the sides of your mix clean. And then the last thing is I have this glue compressor with a really fast attack, just kind of controlling some of the peaks, just to keep everything nice and smooth. See, I'm getting that gain reduction. So yeah, that's it for the effects. So just by doing a few cuts using that Fortet technique and then a few effects, I was able to turn the original sample, which was this. Into this. And then next I'm going to go in and do a bass line. So yeah, when Dilla was in his electronic craftwork era, a lot of times he would use a Moog synthesizer for his bass lines. But for this particular B, I felt that an electric bass would be the best option. So I decided to use the Trillion bass plugin. It's a really dope plugin. It has a lot of good electric upright acoustic and actually a lot of really good synth presets so for this beat i use the hip-hop pick sustain and here's what it sounds like you definitely don't need trillion when i'm done making this bass line i'm going to freeze and flatten it and then just add it to the sample pack so you can either just use it as is or chop it up or add it to a simpler or a sampler and play your own bass line so i'm going to just put in a midi clip since there's kind of a lot going on with the sample, I'm going to keep the bass line pretty simple. Keeping a lot of the notes behind the beat just to add to the groove a little bit. clip in Alright, so since there's a few bass notes that play at the same time as the kick drum, I'm gonna I'm gonna just sidechain compress this bass to the kick. So I already have a compressor on with sidechain activated. So I'm gonna just tell it to take audio from the kick snare channel. And then from the kick post mixer. Have the EQ turned on and set to hundred. So every time there's frequency content at hundred hertz or below from the kick. It's going to duck out the bass line. You can see I'm getting that game reduction right there. So yeah, hit me in the comments if you have any questions about how I set that up or if you want me to do a quick video about it. And then I'm going to just duplicate this. Turn off the compressor and freeze it. Just right click and go to freeze track. And then I'm gonna just right click and go to flatten. 
So that way I turned this bass line into audio. And then I'm going to just add this to the pack. So you'll have that too if you pick up the pack. But for now, I'm going to just turn that off. And the last thing I'm going to do is go in and add a little vocal sample and then finish up the beat. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is add a vocal sample pretty low in the mix and in the background just to add a little bit of a human element and, and a little bit more vibe to the beat. So I'm going to go to the Boom Bap Megabytes Volume 1 folder and just drag this Vokes 2 sample in. And then I'm going to just go get a little cut from that. Here's what it sounds like. So I'm going to just adjust the start time a little bit. Then I'm going to just turn this EQ on and get a lot of the lows and some of the highs out of there. So it doesn't clash with that synth. And then I'm going to just turn on this echo. And on this, I'm using the delay and also the reverb. And then I have the high pass filtering out above 400 on the echoes. So here's what that sounds like. Just duplicate that for the second half. And then I'm going to just copy this and then scan to a different section. Solo it real quick so you can hear. Then I'm going to pitch this one down five half steps. Pitching something down negative five is the same thing as transposing it down a fifth. So I'm going to just change the color so I know that this is transposed. And this goes with the sample up here where I transposed it up a fifth. So here's what that sounds like. And now here's what the whole beat sounds like with the vocal added. So yeah, the vocal really isn't that noticeable. It's just adding a little bit more texture, just overall so the beat has a little bit more vibe. And yeah, that's it. There's a few more mix things that I'm going to do just to get it ready for the demo. But for the most part, that's it. Check out the description for a link if you want to pick up the Boom Bap Megabytes Volume 1 sample pack. There's a few other samples in the pack that I didn't even use in this beat. There's some road samples that I made using a real Fender Rhodes. There's another synth sample, another vocal sample, a pre-chopped string sample, and another bass sample. And everything in the pack is in the key of G minor. So you can chop everything up and layer stuff and it will all work really well together. All right, so that's it for the video. Hopefully it was helpful. Check out the description for a link to pick up the Boom Bap Megabytes Volume 1 sample pack to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Ableton lesson with me and to get a free download of 300 classic drum breaks. Thanks a lot for checking out this video. Peace and much love.